market today. We uh, went past the 5,426 point Fibonacci level with ease and closed above it. So that's a very positive sign for the market. Really, there doesn't seem to be any obstacles until that 6,000 mark now for the Aussie share market. Today on the market, we saw a fresh five year high. It was the third consecutive day of gains. And actually over the last 10 sessions, we've now seen nine sessions of gains on the Aussie share market. It was, however, the defensive sectors which drove on our market, the healthcare space, the telecom space, the financial space and the utility sectors were the ones that outperformed. In the financial space, we saw Commonwealth Bank reaching an all time record high. That of course comes ahead of some earnings coming out of the big four banks. Tomorrow we'll hear from ANZ and then on Thursday we'll hear from NAB. And then in the healthcare space, we also saw CSL shares reaching an all time record high. I think there's a few things driving the market at the moment. One is expectations around the US and really the market's not pricing in quantitative easing to be taken put off until next year March and secondly we've seen volumes out of China as well as demand for commodities and pricing really holding up fairly well and that's helped our material space and thirdly domestic co uh, conditions we are still seeing signs of a cyclical recovery especially in that housing space so altogether a fantastic day for the market and I have to mention the volumes on the market 4.8 billion dollars being traded on a Monday Typical Monday, we see about $3 billion worth of stock being traded. So the fact that we saw more than 60% of what we'd expect on a typical ma Monday makes it an extra good performance by the Aussie market. The, the good gains coming from? Well, at the moment, they're coming from the banks as well as the material space. In fact, we've got the countdown going until the end of the month, which is on Thursday. And so far, the market's up 4.2% for October. Now, that's quite big compared to the average uh, performance, monthly performance that we've seen in 2013 at 1.4%. But it's really been that financial space which has been outperforming. A gain of 6.6% in October. And this week's going to be a huge one for the banks. We see ANZ coming out with its profit numbers tomorrow. We're expecting to see $6.4 billion. There should be no surprises because we've seen the quarterly updates. We'll still be watching the Insta Bank as well as the Institutional Bank because margins do like, look like they're being squeezed there. And then on Thursday, we'll be watching NAB with a $5.9 uh, billion profit likely. And uh, the UK business, if that keeps on turning around, that should be positive for the banks. So if we have a look at the banking space, I think the big thing is that we are seeing a massive move in terms of the housing space here in Australia. And that's a huge positive. It's especially for the likes of Commonwealth Bank as well as Westpac, which are very much domestically focused. So I think the banks are a big mover. And then the other side of the equation is the other big part of the Australian market, which is the material space. Iron ore price is still at 133.50 US a tonne, volume still hold, holding up, and that really bodes well for the miners. One thing though, we've mentioned a lot about technicals, Mm. is the fundamental side and I guess if we have a look at valuations on the market we're going to be hearing a lot more about this the valuations are starting to look very stretched and this is the PE ratio of the Australian market from 2000 to 2013 and you can see the last 10 years we've really been operating in a band and you can see at the moment we're at the upper end of the band with a PE ratio of 17 generally the upper end of that band is around about 18 so fundamental analysts will be getting a bit nervous around valuations which are starting to look a little bit stretched but having said that, the market's forward-looking and it's pricing in earnings growth. And as we do see those earn that earnings growth materialising, we should see valuations naturally start to fall down. The biggest risk to the market fundamentally is that we do see a delay or a protracted uh, recovery in terms of those cyclical earnings. But as long as we see earnings growth, the market looking pretty good from a fundamental viewpoint too. I mean, you just have to look at some of these small cap information technology companies, near maps, uh, Mint Wireless, eBet, uh, Zero has been doing very well in that space as well. And I guess as the problem lies, um, it is that technology do does change very quickly. So while we are seeing a lot of wins on the table, and a lot of these companies are at an inflection point where they've gone from a number of years of losses to turning around and starting to make positive cash flow. And that's where the biggest share price jump often, uh, often hits. And that's really what we're say seeing. But I guess looking forward, you have to start to price in uh, competition coming in with mm. some of these newer technologies technologies as well. So a really difficult space, but a fantastically performing space in 2013. Uh, speaking of good performance, GPT, Julie, did pretty well today, up about 1.6%. 
GPT actually coming out with a profit upgrade. Now, it doesn't sound like much. It's uh, predicting earnings per share uh, growth of 6%, and previously it was forecasting growth of 5%, but, you know, that's an increase of 20% on its previous forecast. So it does look like GPT in a much better space. Looking at this business, it is a diversified property business, and I think the other uh, key thing to come out of the announcement today is that it will be looking for an extra $10 billion worth of funds under management. Now, that's a massive amount, and it does look like it is planning to launch two new funds. One will be a metropolitan office fund and the other will be an industrial uh, industrial fund. And really, I think this shows that GPT is probably moving away from that retail space, which makes up about 53% of its assets and has been a very difficult area and will probably continue to be a difficult area. And instead, its funds management business is trying to grow the earnings there to make up about 10% of its group's earnings. It's currently at about 3%. So GPT, I think a slight shift in strategy that we're seeing and some of the things to watch out for so that that it continues positive momentum is that funds management business but also earnings per share accretive acquisitions because it is on that acquisition uh, trail and also any developments that it makes in its portfolio as well so they're the three things i'll be looking out for from gpt